Hey guys, Debo here. Uh, I've been playing a little bit of Wilson and uh, kind of came down to a little conclusive build about summons that actually works out fairly uh, decent. Utilizes a lot of the uh, range archer skeletons along with the, uh, what is it called here? Uh, the liver mortis, uh, utilizing the mage uh, talent inside of it in order to give yourself a lot of minions on screen that can shoot projectiles. Uh, liver mortises have a pretty good attack speed uh, in combination with the shield that can use to protect yourself and your allies. Uh, and then of course the hunting swarms uh, of course are utilizing uh, the piercing shot that they have and uh, having a total of six of them on the field. Um, this build is a little bit towards the end game uh, or at least when you unlock the duplicate skill. Uh, you unlock the duplicate skill after you beat the story mode and you start going through the all the the extra, you know, in-game uh, game modes, and you can actually unlock it through the uh, Interact lab uh, Laboratory. Uh, basically, it's 15k to get to the second duplicate skill, the first one before that, just to duplicate it at level one, or just be able to duplicate the skill once. Uh, it's only 5k of uh, the uh, purple, or the, I think it's kind of primordial, or whatever uh, currency, and what have you not. Um, so, it's not too bad to get. Um, it's it's not too hard to uh, get it going, but like I tell most people is that uh, the pets in this game, the AIs are very stupid. Uh, the only pet AIs that you can kinda uh, use into your favor are the ones that are Spottles, Hunting Swarm, and Feeding Swarm. Uh, Feeding Swarm is the melee uh, skeletons or zombies. If you double click on the enemy target, it will send them over there so you can kind of control it but it's still not a hundred percent good the hunting swarm is a little bit better but only because they can attack from so far off screen and they attack whatever you uh tap the button if you got a max amount of summon they'll fire at whatever you want to fire at uh the liver mortis for the traditional one uh when you just use the large poison golem instead of one of these specialty ones it's okay they're very good at holding aggro so if you just need that minion that when you get to certain elites, you can just run into the elite, get the elite, get the get the liver mortis or get the zombie to stack on top of them and taunt. Then um, that that's a good skill for that. But um, I kind of opted to not go that route. I wanted a build that can let me just run the in-game content really fast, the expedition maps, uh, where you choose all the different levels, kind of like in Diablo three, um, where you go in. You select your uh, level that you want to run. You can roll area modifiers and what have you not. And uh, usually you could, uh, for the most part, you can only uh, go down three different floors. Every floor you go down, the more uh, resources, points, uh, items, and better magic find you get. Uh, so you do three different levels. Uh, as long as you don't totally wipe out on one of the levels, uh, then you just come out and you rinse, wash, repeat, and do it again. Uh, it will provide you a lot of progress for all these like little buildings and structures you're trying to get complete. Um, so for the most part, that's just pretty much the official end game. Uh, mandate boards are just kind of like random little uh, missions you can do. They're not really uh, the greatest form. I wish you can kind of choose which mandates you wanted to do. So you're going to find yourself at the end game doing a lot of the expeditions. So the reason why I uh, did the build that I did this way is just to be focused around that. I don't really have to be, worry about being too tough with my defenses because we're giving a lot of leeway with how many times you can die on each map. Uh, you would have to die, I do believe, four times in a row on the same map to just get wiped off and kicked out, and that's not going to probably happen. Uh, plus, the crazy thing is when you're dead, your minions keep attacking. So if you really kind of wanted to cheese the game, you probably could just let a you know elite that's really tough hit you and just let your pets keep firing and shooting free shots and doing damage until you choose to respawn. Um, I'm pretty sure they will patch that later, but I mean, food for thought. So anyway, um, when I was doing this build, I knew that the pets weren't going to be that strong. Um, I played in a bit and I know that between the AI, pets need really good consistent damage and they need to scale with the user or the summoner and they also for the main thing need to have a good ai i don't think they're going to get a good ai anytime soon um they can buff pets to make them stronger i think the pet builds where you're uh i saw one guy who was telling me he was using his uh melee zombies to explode and he was doing a lot of good damage and was leaving a lot of poison clouds 
I think a spell, I think a pet built like that will do well because you control it and you can force the monsters to kind of do what you want. Same thing with the archers, they can focus fire on what you're attacking. So you can kind of force them in to do what you want to do. But the liver mortis and also outside the liver mortis, the uh, parasite, I, I don't know, unless they really rebuild the AI for those specific monsters and make them super aggressive, I can't foresee them being uh, really fruitful if you're trying to do a pet build. Just because, you know, you got a bunch of pets doesn't mean necessarily you should use them all, especially with the duplicate spell. Uh, sometimes you might just want to use, uh, you know, all of the archer skeletons. Those are solid. Or all the warrior ones and make them explode. That's acceptable as well, too. Um, or if you just wanted to, you know, have two main spells and then just use a liver mortis golems just to tank for you, that can work as well, too. So with this overall build, I kept it really simple. Um, in terms of my stats, I'm going to be running a 2 to 1 ratio on toughness. So basically, whatever my wisdom is, I want my toughness to be half of that, of the of my wisdom. So basically, 2 points into wisdom, 1 point into toughness. Um, you want to have a high amount of wisdom for the status ailment chance score and the spell status ailment uh, chance score. And you want to have the toughness because we're going to need that toughness uh, to get us, uh, us a little extra boost because we're going to be taking some talents that's going to make us really weak because we're going to try to keep our pets alive. So uh, I'm just going to go through the uh, spells that I use real quick. I'm not going to go too much into depth about it. It's just a combination of stuff that I found that worked really good for me. Um, one of my major spells is going to be using Consuming Embers. Very solid skill. Does good damage. Causes burning ailments and, you know, and stuff like that. And it's an elemental damage, which is good. Uh, for the Consuming Embers... Uh, I like to get the uh, willpower reduced cost. That's something I got early on in the levels because it's just really good to reduce the amount of mana it's cost. And the main basic thing that you want to get, and I don't think you get this until what, uh, 34? I could be wrong. I don't know what level you get this, but you get the heart piercer. Um, the projectiles don't explode or collide. They go through the enemy. You can hit multiple enemies. You get managed 50% damage, but it's phenomenal because that is such a damaging ability for it, the, the fireball to go through and hit multiple enemies. So I would strongly advise, if anything else, you get the reduce and willpower and you get the heart piercer. And then after that, I got uh, you know increased number of projectiles because that was pretty cool. You don't have to get this if you don't like it. I don't really think it's all the way necessary, but I kind of prefer it. And if you did this, you'll do more damage with your uh, consuming, em consuming embers. I got volatile embers for ailment chance and then 40% uh, ailment damage, which is really important because we're relying upon that. And then, you know, a couple things like right here, average damage is up. And then uh, I think if I get, I think I got all the points I can actually have 10. So that'll be pretty much about it. And as I level, the skill will become stronger. So main thing is heart piercer. And uh, you also want the uh, reduced willpower cost because you don't want to go through all your uh, your willpower that quickly, okay? So that's going to be one of our major spells that we use while we're fighting. Um, that's going to become a lot of our primary damage. Now, some people say, well, Debo, we're, we're doing a summoner build. Why are you using that skill? It's just because the way the game is right now, um, unless you're going like explosion zombies, you can't realistically put all your eggs in one basket with with the summoner skills because they're not they're not at that level yet so uh you can go summons and get some success with that but you also want to combine it with the skill that you can use while your summons are doing their damage you know it's no different than witch doctor back in the day in diablo 3 where you're looking for those other ways to kind of do a little extra damage on the side so you might be using locust swarm or something like that or and PoE when you're using a Necromancer and you're looking for certain ways to uh, up your damage by, you know, buffing your allies and making them do more damage or casting certain spells that's going to allow you to do that or making something so you stay alive longer so your pets can do damage. Kind of the same concept here. Um, so make sure you pick up that Consuming Embers. is a really solid skill. Uh, the Feeding Swarm, uh, it's a pretty solid skill. I like it. The Zombie, I haven't really experimented with the Explosion one yet, but I'm going to in my next build iteration to see how that is. This is a good one before you get duplicate scale and you're going through storyline. These uh, guys actually work out pretty well. I would advise early on in the game to make sure you stack up their HP. And then as you get more of the talents to make it so they survive a lot better and the skill levels up, then you can kind of shift them towards damage. Okay skill. They heard the explosion's really good. I haven't dabbled in it, but we're not using it in this build. Uh, Hunting Swarm. We're going to end up duplicating the spell twice. So we can have a total of six skeletons shooting poison. Uh... Uh, you know, poison damage, uh, converting his physical to toxic damage. 
Now, I don't know if the game properly registers your toxic damage to transfer over to them to do more. We don't know yet. I, I'm not 100% sure if anybody out there has tested it. You know, let us know in the comment section. But the main thing is, uh, for the Dungeon Grime, you want to definitely get that. And you also want to get uh, the arrow shots by summons computer's enemies. That's really important. Because we want the shots to hit multiple enemies at once. If you guys play PoE uh, and you guys like uh, had a um, knitted nightmare back when you used to use that for your specter, and you would link it with piercing ability damage and multi shot, it gets real crazy. Because you, the main thing is you want your your piercing ability of your minions to go through the uh, uh, of your summons to go through the enemies, because that nets you a lot of damage, especially when you're in narrow corridors and those arrows are flying and hitting all the monsters at once. So if anything else. You want to make sure you convert them to poison damage. It gives them a nice health boost of 2.1. If you're not worried about the poison damage and you need them with more HP, you can get them with the frost damage. That gives them AK, which is fantastic. We're going to get the pierce two enemies, and we're going to get the max amount of summons, and then we're going to throw everything else into damage, all right? And we're going to duplicate that twice. So we want to make sure we have a total of six skeletons. When you tap on the skill, it actually will help you focus fire on your skeletons if you need to on a certain enemy. For the most part, when I'm running through the skeletons behind me, do a pretty good job of following up and hitting things from a long distance. Um, their AI is not the smartest, but the thing that they lack in AI, they make up in range. So even though like sometimes like they're not that smart, for the most part, between me controlling where they want to shoot, even sometimes when I'm not worried about that and I'm just having them drag behind me, their shots are still coming through and doing damage because they, for the most part, they are pretty good at least shooting whatever's in their, within their range. Uh, so, like I said, we got duplicate skills of both of those. Uh, if you don't have the duplicate skill, I would use Feeding Swarm until you're able to do so. Uh, Liver Mortis. Uh, this one also will be duplicated. And uh, make sure you take the Thunder and Cracking Punisher. Uh, this makes it so you have a mage that can give you like a little AoE shield bubble. It doesn't block everything, but it blocks a lot of nice ranged projectiles and certain things like that. And also keep you and your allies alive. Um, the auto attack on these guys are amazing. I would tell you to go with increased attack speed and on both of them and then increase damage now they're not they, their attacks won't pierce but the the attack speed and how fast they are is pretty incredible and the monsters actually for the most part pretty smart 85% of the time like it's gonna be hitting something on the screen spamming its abilities things get a little bit crazy you can do a combat tactical roll back to them pop the shield and stay under the shield if you need some extra damage mitigation or something like that um, I definitely do like that. One thing I have been thinking about doing is taking off a little bit of this damage and uh, putting three points into generational grief. But I would have to, you know, uh, I would have to probably drop. I have to drop that damage, that damage, and the movement speed, and put it into generational grief. If you're having a little bit of survivability, and then you duplicate that skill where you have two of them out, where you, where they both will be splitting the damage that you take to those minions. That's a really good skill. Um, or you can just go for the extra damage and the attack speed. And we're definitely just going to go ahead and uh, duplicate that twice. Uh, the only last spell that we have is Aether Jump. And Aether Jump is kind of however you want to hook it up. The main thing as Aether Jump is, is that we want an escape ability and a movement ability. Because we want to be able to get through the environments quick. We're not always going to have tactical rolls to get us through the environment quick. Because the name of the game is not killing some elite monster or whatever like in path of exile in the mapping system when you're going against like certain different tier elders or stuff like that and uh it's more aligned towards diablo where uh you want to get as many runs as is possible and keep your progression in your end game going the more content you're clear to through the depths and stuff like that the more you can come back and get uh you can get a productivity so you can you know, start up these things. Some of these have 2,000 productivity. You might get two or 300 points per clear. So you want to be able to run through those as quickly as possible to keep your productivity going so you can get through the in-game content, unlock your fifth uh, skill, unlock duplication. That stuff's really important because I really feel like the in-game is uh, it's just basically spamming through the levels. Uh, just getting through the, the content as quick as possible, get out, get back in. Uh, and then you want to go start pushing towards the end game, which has like a lot of kind of uh, paragon levels where you just keep going infinitely in pre-made dungeons and what have you not. Um, so we have our movement speed, which is Aether Jump. We have our tactical rolls for combat stuff so we can keep ourselves alive. Our DPS is going to come a lot from the consuming embers. And we also have pets that are out there that can help us focus fire down the target. So we should have no problems with any of the content and stuff. Now for the gear, the gear is pretty straightforward. 
Um, the main thing is we want to focus on a status ailment, elemental status ailment, anything that increases the damage for those, and uh, HP and force shield on an item, or a lot of HP or a lot of force shield. So things don't have to be too fancy, but you always want to keep that kind of theme in mind. Um, sometimes when you get higher up and you get these legendary pieces, you might not have any increased ailment damage, and you just might wear it because it just gives you more survivability stats. But as you can see, like on my weapon, it has 49% spell damage, which is good for the embers. Leech, life leech from the spell damage, 150% element uh, status ailment chance score, 30% duration, weakness, inflict enemies, that's whatever. Um, you can kind of see like the common theme. Uh, like my shoes right here, they uh, they have the movement speed, they have force, good force shield, good health, critical hit chance score, spell casting speed, which is good, so I can spam out the consuming embers. And uh, it doesn't have any ailment damage on it, but like if you look at my pants, my pants do have ailment damage, you know? Um, so a lot of health or force shield or both. You want to socket toughness into your, uh, your, your, your uh, equipment if you can. And you want to get ailment damage uh, wherever you can uh, so, you know, you can just keep up that consistent damage and what have you not. And like I said, those are the pretty much for the major stats you all got to look out for. It's pretty simple. So ailment damage or elemental ailment damage, force shield and HP are your friends. And uh, if you can fit in crit too, that's fine. But as long as you got it all forced towards the ailments and the survivability stats of having high HP and high force field, you should be fine. So in the last segment of the build is uh, for the Gates of Fates. Um, other classes can kind of go and just pick uh, you know, what they want, a couple skills here and there. It kind of doesn't work out there for if you're going like a summoner type build or a caster type build. Um, hands down, bar none, uh, this one right here under the Kabbalists is extremely strong with ailments. It is ridiculously strong. You don't have to go ailments. I would strongly tell you to go ailments. That it's, it's really strong. Like another tree we have right here is like the Warlock ability. That's more like if you're going to be casting a lot of spells, that's what I would advise to actually go into. Actually, if I was going to be like a caster, I probably would still, I would get Warlock, all these spells, and I would still get all the Kabbalist. And then I would round it off with Scholar. So Scholar, I feel, is going to be in most of the caster mage type class builds. Um, Kabbalist is really strong. So you're going to be either getting Kabbalist, well, I feel in most all situations you should get Kabbalist. And then what's going to happen is if you're going to pet build, you're going to go into Plaguebringer. And if you're not getting a pet build, you're going to Warlock. Um, you could go up to higher to Time Weaver. Uh, you could experiment at uh, Omni Temptus. But I find in my playing through beta, and to make things a lot easier, it's just simply just to take every single talent in Plaguebringer, take every single talent in Kabbalist, and then just start taking everything in Scholar, and that gives you a nice foundation. The game is not fully polished yet, so they're probably going to change a lot more things. And down the line, I'm not saying we can't come back to this tree, reinvest it, and find what's more efficient. But just for right now, so we can clear content and start doing the end game with pets and start getting all our projects done in our town so we can get all the way geared out, I would strongly advise you go in early on inside the scholar tree and you get the attrition strategist and then you come through and you get the cabalist you go into immortal offering grievous afflictions you get your insidious decay you get your promedio insights and you get your cabalist only just go directly to these talents that's all you need to get and then you're going to make a straight beeline to the plague bringer and you're going to pick up your max and health force shield. You're going to get your plague bringer sacrifice of the flesh, which makes it so you lose some life and force shield to power to make your pets tougher. And you get these three talents. After that, you want to pick up plague bringer. Uh, enemies receive a stack of poison every few seconds when they're close to you. That skill works out very well. And then you also want to pick up the undertaker. And then after you get those skills, fill all the rest of the plague bringer up. Uh, and then fill all the cabalists up. And then finally fill up all the scholar. Down the line, we can come back a little bit later and we'll readjust this, but just for the sake of just having a smooth, clean build that can push through the content, that's all we want to have. So that's pretty much it for our Gates of Fate. Pretty simple. Our skill set is very common sense, straightforward. We're going to be using uh, the uh, Consuming Embers with ailments, a, a combination of our pets that we can kind of control, range damage to kind of focus fire everything down and melt everything down. And I mean, that's pretty much all you want to do. 
uh, I have a little video right here that can kind of show the build in progress so you guys can see everything what's going on. And uh, like I said, the main thing I always focus on is just getting through the uh, dungeon really quick and just burning down the minions as much as possible. As you see, I got my combat rolls, I got my aether jump, you know, uh, you got my minions, they're starting to throw off their range attacks. Even though you see how they're off screen and they're still doing damage, that's what I really like about them. And they're very good at helping break down uh, certain monsters and break down their armor or their guard. So you see me going in. Um, I do have that talent from Plaguebringer. When enemies around me, they get poisoned. Uh, I'm switching between auto attacks and the uh, the, the embers. Uh, they're, they're causing flame damage and ailments, so that's fantastic. And uh, those two guys behind me are actually the rigor mortis with the mage one. And you see how fast they're attacking? And uh, that's exactly what we want. And uh, the main thing is, is just... You know, we're just trying to fill that bar up so we can fight the boss, get to the next level, do that three times, come back to the town and collect all our little uh, benefits and stuff like that. So, um, uh, we don't have to worry too much about survivability or, you know, getting shot down and stuff like that because there is no greater rift system. There is no ranking. You're just trying to get through the game and uh, make your runs through each individual level. And you need to die four individual times pretty much to... Uh, you know get wiped off the map um you know where you have to go back to town and you get no reward no one should be uh going through that no problem as you see that's a little shield that the uh you know liver mortis provides when you have it under the mage one and that damage that they're doing is thunder but as you see it's kind of like it just like a rapid fire straight like just a bunch of projectiles going down the center now if you wanted to actually go into some other talent trees and look into some increased damage effects of projectiles that is a possibility that might work really good i think there's one talent where if there's no enemies around you do more damage that would be good for the projectiles but i don't know if that transfers over to pet there's also another talent that makes it so that you get additional projectiles but you lose more damage you might want to look into that where you have a bunch of you know uh you know your little fireballs going on the screen and stuff like that uh consuming embers or whatever and uh you know, that's all up to you in theory crafting, but I just try to get the most straightforward, clean build I can get. Good survivability, decent pets, good damage from myself, good damage from my pets. That can just get me through these dungeons really quick. And like you see, you can see right here, I'm not too worried about the enemies that are fighting me or, you know, putting damage on me and stuff like that. I'm just trying to get through the environment, kill these monsters, fill the bar up, and call it a day. Uh, the, the embers are just a really strong skill. Uh, sometimes you do run into willpower issues, but you can just start auto attacking and that's perfectly fine You know do a couple of the ember attacks uh, Because they'll pass through and pierce to the enemy and then uh, mix that up with some autos and that'll be perfectly fine uh, it, I would advise putting your, um, your Zombie archers on some keys you can rapidly tap like you know with your left and right finger um, So you can like you know when you have your mouse over an enemy you don't you, you're already tapping in them Which is causing them to start focus firing on the targets that you want to so, as you can see, they're falling or behind me pretty well. Their range is pretty okay. And uh, they're doing what they've got to do. Sometimes they do stupid stuff like sit on the stairs and shoot and they get half their shots blocked. But for the most part, uh, it's, it's working out pretty good. You know, everything's dying pretty quick. And, uh, you know, they're pretty solid with helping take down elites. Um, but I find myself, if I'm in an area where I can get that little primordial energy or use your ultimate ability... Um, I use that as often as I can because it's like basically, well, I can just kill everything on the screen really quick and, you know, progress through the uh, dungeon that much quicker. Uh, I usually like to save it for bosses, uh, because it ends up doing some pretty good damage and, uh, some bosses can be assholes, but it's really rare that you run into a boss that you have problems with, you know? Um, as you just saw right there, I killed enough millions so we can go ahead and get to the boss. So now I'm just going to skip past most of these monsters. I might kill a couple here and there for experience or whatever, but I'm really not too worried about it. My major concern is to uh, get to the boss. Now, sometimes I'll stop and do like little chest events because sometimes it's nice because you can pick up some nice items, uh, pick up some more items that we can use to change into energy that we are always seem to need early game. Um, don't know what I'm doing right here. I think I'm just clearing everything out. Um, yeah, I think I did. And then, uh, am I going to open that chest? Oh, no, I'm going to spawn the monsters right here, so. You know, this is just the first floor of 67. I still got to unlock a lot more of the Paragon stuff, but, um, you know, 
I'm pretty sure this build will be able to take me all the way to the end game. Like when we start hitting Paragon levels and stuff, I'm pretty sure there might be, uh, as soon as you start maxing on gear, certain levels in which you will probably need to maybe min max a little bit more, or maybe look into certain ways you're going to build certain things. Let's just speed it up a little bit. Okay, I got my ass together. So, uh, um, that's pretty much it for the video. Um, I wish I could uh, try to keep it as short as possible. I think it's going to end up clocking out to be 26 minutes. Um, I mean, that's about it, man. Um, I would do more in-depth de detailed builds to this game or make it a little bit more editing and make it more cleaner for you guys. But in all honesty, man, I don't know if I'm going to invest a lot of time in a Wilson. They released the game a little, way too early. There's a lot more polish, and there's, this game is going to go through so many more iterations. And I don't know um, how it's going to be. And then a lot of the things is I don't know what the true end game is going to be because there really isn't an end game. So as you saw, I just killed the last boss there. We're going to go ahead and pause it here. If you guys want to see more footage of the build, you guys just talk to my Twitch channel. You can see all the runs that I was doing. And uh, I mean, that's about it. I really hope Wilson decides to do online leagues. Uh, like League, like uh, like PoE and Diablo 3. I hope they have ladder seasons. I hope they develop a way that you can trade better. I hope they clean up a lot of the optimization and making it so things stop crashing. I hope they get the AI for the pets a lot better. It's a, it's a tall order, man. It's a lot of stuff they need to work on. And uh, then they got to deal with people cheating. and all. So, so like I said, in a year's time, they probably can get the game up to snuff. I don't know if people will still be playing it. Is it an enjoyable game? I tell people, treat it like a single-player game. You know, when you start looking into multiplayer and leagues and stuff like that, it's going to get a lot stressed out. Uh, is it a solid action RPG? Yeah, it's okay. Could they have done a lot better? Yeah. Do I understand they only have 40 people and they probably needed the money to keep going? Yeah, I get it. Uh, but in a, in a scene where there's PoE and there's the, in Diablo 3, it's just, if you're considering it as an online multiplayer or action RPG, it falls short. If you're considering it as a single player offline action RPG, it's pretty phenomenal. I like the system. It's very clean. And it's a good way to kill some hours, man, if you just need a game to play a little bit every day and eventually, you know, you're not really too worried about it. But that's it. I'm going to stop blabbing. I appreciate you guys watching this video. I promise I'm going to keep trying to get this content out. Um, I think next week I'm going to, you know, uh, maybe put out that little zombie build. Like maybe a little zombie with the exploding build. That seemed pretty cool. We'll see how that does. Um, but I really need to get the all the in-game content unlocked so we can really test all the different builds out. But, you know, I could put out a build a week. It's not that hard. We'll do it in the same video format. And uh, we'll see the, where this takes us. And then when if the game goes really bad, we'll stop. And if the game goes really good, then we'll keep making videos. But I uh, hope you guys have a good day. Uh, stream every day on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash SPSD. But for the most part, follow so you know when I go online. Uh, I'll upload all the podcasts on YouTube. So make sure you guys like, subscribe, and all that stuff here. And get alerted to when I put out new content. Uh, we also do the live stream of the uh, podcast on Sundays at 6 p.m. Pacific Center Time, twitch.tv slash SPSDevo. All right, man. I know I've been blabbering. I hope you guys have a good week. Hope you guys have a good month. Hope everybody's doing in the best spirits they can for 2020. And uh, I'll get out and uh, I'll see you guys next video.